A lot of churches tend to become imbalanced, often based on the pastor and the way he swims. You know, some guys are, they're all about one thing, or they like a couple of things, and the whole church becomes about that. And they become very lopsided, or every church you walk into, oh, these guys are big on this, or they're big on that. Some of them are tradition. Some churches are tradition. Now remember, I'm not saying that these things are wrong. I'm saying that these things are in, uh, if, if they're not in balance, then you've got a problem, you've got a health problem. So tradition, tradition is this is how we've always done it. This is how we've always done it. This is how we, we're not going to change it. This is who we are. And our identity is wrapped up in the way we have always done it. Some are driven by personalities. Pastors good looking, pastors sharp, pastors, you know, loaded or pastors whatever. And he is the one making it happen. Okay, he's the one making an so As soon as you walk into the church, you find that this church is a little fan club and the pastor is a little star over there. He's a little shadow happening, you know, in that, in that uh, context. So some churches are driven by personality. Is that right? Is that wrong? Well, it's not healthy. Finances. Where the treasurer says yes sir, no sir, three bags goes sir. If the treasurer says yes, okay. If the treasurer says no, whoa. God himself might want it, but it's not going to happen. Okay, and that organizations or the churches that are set up in such a way that all the missions end at the treasurer's desk. <laughs> the treasurer decides, sign go, make go. That's it. Right? Finances then decides whether they're going to do a ministry or not going to do or not, not do a ministry. Faith doesn't drive that. Shall we do this? Shall we accomplish this? Shall we organize this? Well, do we have the money? If we don't have the money, finish. <clears throat> So faith doesn't drive what God wants you to do. And, and you know, almost always, God asks you to do something when you don't have the wherewithal to do it. Always. He always asks you to do something more than for what you are equipped or have. Because he wants you to lean on him, draw from him, grow on him. You get what I'm saying? He's always expecting you to act in faith. Jump in faith. So there's tradition, there's personalities, there's finances. Some want the buildings. I was with a church for many, many years uh, that had a building. By God's grace, I inherited as I walked into the church, I inherited a fantastic four-story building, right? And the, the church itself accommodated about 120, 30 people, okay? Kiss kiss out, you know, just absolutely jam it in about 120, 130, okay? Once we fill that out, then we thought, okay, we just do another service. Then this was another service. Then I wanted to go somewhere else and I wanted to plant in other cities and other parts of Delhi. Then Ghazabad started expanding, Faridabad started expanding, Trans Yamuna started expanding. So we need to get out there. Everybody can't be coming 40, 50 minutes every Sunday morning. They're like, how can you go over there? We have a building. We spent crores on this building. You can't go anywhere else. You have the building. And I'm like, okay, so the building has decided how many people they should have. And the building has decided whether I should go or not go. And the building often becomes the dictated uh, terms for what and how your church should grow. Buildings become the project. Buildings become what the whole offering goes into. <laughs> all, the, all the expense is in maintaining the building, scraping the building, painting the building. My goodness. Some churches are filled with programs. They think that programs is what drives the church. If we can keep on having more programs, if we can be more busy, yay! Everybody is tired, everybody is exhausted, but we are serving the Lord. So some churches are as fast. So as soon as you get to the church, they'll give you the program sheet, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every they got a program in the morning, in the evening, and the people are exhausted running to all the programs. And if you don't show up, brother, you don't love Jesus. You know, so that's a little bit of you know, guilt happening along with that. Some like events, big events, conferences, they're conference driven. Some are unchurched driven. You know, just, okay, get, get it. How many people are we How many people? Is that right? Is that wrong? It's unhealthy. Because we're talking about, say it with me, balance. We're talking about balance. And the problem with balance is the pastor usually likes one or two things. And then the other things are left at the mercy of whether the pastor has the time, <coughs> the money, or the interest. And that becomes a problem. Many other plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purposes that must prevail. It's the Lord's purposes that prevail. So if I want my church, if I want, if you want your church 
to be built to last, built to succeed, built to be blessed. It must be built on the purposes of God. Why? Because the purposes of God prevail. Amen. Right? The purposes of God prevail. I want the purposes of God to be the foundation of my church. I want the purposes of God to drive my church. Not tradition, not personalities, not finance. They can be there. There's nothing wrong with that. But it should not drive. Jesus said, I will build my church. Jesus said, I will build my church. And when I build my church, the gates of the 80 is not going to overcome it. 